Hello, I'm Jonathan Womack, and welcome to this edition of Community Insider. Coming up on the show, we have Mr. Brian Walter, who's with Canon Severe Weather, and we are wanting you to think about severe weather and what it means to our local community, Middle Tennessee, Upper Cumberland, and the Cumberland Plateau. That and much more on this edition of Community Insider. Welcome to another edition of Community Insider. Join us as we travel Middle Tennessee, uncovering history and experiencing the adventure of unique stories and events coming to you inside your community. Jonathan Womack, welcome to this edition of Community Insider. Mr. Brian is with us and he is the owner, operator, and the man behind the scenes when it comes to Canon Severe Weather. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for finally getting to meet you in person. For years I followed uh, from your Facebook page to your other uh, YouTube accounts and stuff like that you, you've been doing. There may be some people on here going well. I'm not in Cannon County, so uh, you know what. Well, what good does this do? And the reason that it's important is because the knowledge that Brian has, the experience that he's learned, uh, and what it means to us on a local level when it comes to severe weather. People who has some eyes to the sky, and uh, because of the love that they have for weather and weather knowledge, that can help all of us out. Um, most recent. Um, there has been one of the, I guess, one of the closest tornadoes that really rocked the local community uh, around Warren County and surrounding counties was the tornado that happened in Cannon County. And I know that was something, Brian, that you was not wanting to ever see, but it's something on a daily, nightly watch he's always watching for to help other people. Brian, I'm going to start with this. What got you into this whole weather thing? Well, I think I'm a lot like a lot of other people who are like this. They, when they were a child, there was something that made an impression on them with the weather. And with me, I'm from South Carolina. I lived about 100 miles inland from the ocean, and we would have these thunderstorms called pulse storms that would pop up, and they would produce lightning for 
an extended amount of time and the lightning would a lot of times pop very close to the home we had a lot of pine trees down there and these trees would get popped and the bark would just shoot off and you would see a line down the tree and as a child that was very scary and you know you just didn't know when it might come and get you so now that I'm older, I, I have a, still have the interest in that, and now I know how to somewhat predict lightning. Lightning is very unpredictable, but, but I try my best to see what the conditions are that produce lightning, and I'm able to share that with the community. Uh, speaking of that, uh, you have a resource for people, no matter where they live in Middle Tennessee, it can be a very helpful resource when it comes to the lightning prediction. Um, explain just a little bit about uh, that wonderful resource that, that people have. I know it's one of many things you have, but since you mentioned the lightning, what, what, what does that mean that you can predict the, the lightning? Well, the lightning uh, device that I have here is called an electric field mill and they have a network of these down at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida because you can have a highly charged cloud above the space launch area and if they launch a rocket, even if there is no lightning happening, if that cloud is charged, as soon as that rocket takes off, the vapor trail can trigger lightning. They call that rocket triggered lightning. So they never want to launch a spacecraft and get it hit by lightning. Wow. So I'm using that same technique here to measure clouds above Cannon County, uh, specifically over central Cannon County, because this uh, device has a range of maybe six miles out of detecting electric fields. And when I see the electric field rising, I'm able to say, hey, the conditions are are, are there for, uh, there's charging in the, in the sky, and if you're outside, lightning could happen. Now, we don't know a specific level at which the electric field gets before lightning happens because there are a lot of variables that can trigger lightning, anything from tall towers to precipitation coming down. But when, when I know there's charging, I know I can say, hey, there's electric field out there, it's too dangerous to be outside. That's awesome. And that's just one of the tools. We have yeah, other what's tools. Some other ways? Yeah, other tools. I use uh, NASA Sport down in uh, Huntsville. They're using, um, they're, they're developing a tool to also predict lightning. It's called Lightning AI. We are just within the range of this tool right now. Mm. And eventually, this tool will become operational and it will be available to other areas in the country. But right now, it's only available near NASA. NASA centers, wow. which Huntsville is one of those. Well, um, another uh, tool I use is called a Lightning Cast, and that is uh, an overlay that I download and put over my radar, and it shows a percentage, a percent chance of lightning in an area, and this uses uh, information from satellites to predict this. Hmm, that's awesome. So let's go back to how people can see your great resources. I know number one, uh, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, that's the main ways, right? That's right. some other resources that you have. And on X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, X is how I communicate with the Weather Service and local TV stations because all of them also follow uh, Canon Severe Weather so they know what's happening out here. The radar can see what's going on up in the sky, but the radar cannot see what's going on on the ground. That's right. So uh, a valuable resource reversing back to you is the people that helps you out on those Facebook pages stuff like that you know uh, you know I followed some of them just watching to see bad weather conditions bad road conditions stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, you, you you depend on people to help you with other resources also right that's true that's true uh, the National Weather Service has a chat room that I'm in uh, the people in this chat room would be uh, local media TV media emergency managers um, other what they call t-spotters like myself each county County in Middle Tennessee. Most counties in Middle Tennessee has someone that covers their county like I do. And we're all in there and the National Weather Service will say, hey, we're watching a storm. It's got some rotation. At this time though, we don't think it's quite to tornado warning levels. And then a minute or two later, that might change to say, hey, this is really starting to tighten up and we're going to issue a warning here very soon for Cannon County. And I'm able to put a message out that says, hey, a tornado warning is coming, prepare to take cover. The official warning comes out and then I post that as I receive it from the National Weather Service. Now, I'm not allowed to issue warnings, but I can talk about uh, situations that might be developing and we're monitoring to see what the National Weather Service says about it. That's right. So, you know, even for me, I live in Warren County, 
but a, a great resource for me is Cannon Weather, uh, Cannon Severe Weather, because before it gets to Warren County and my home, it's going to pass through you guys. And and eyes and ears to the sky is so important. You know, this this scenario has been in play my entire life. I'm in my 40s, and the the uh, great network that we have of Nashville uh, weather stations. I'm so thankful for the technology they have and the resources they offer the community. But you know, they'll go back uh, to a commercial or they'll go back to a show and. We're still, you know, targeted for a, a bad, severe weather condition, and and we sort of feel left out sometimes. These um, severe weather uh, Facebook pages and um, websites and YouTube channels can be so important, like your own, uh, that can help people with these needs because not everybody's watching for us like you guys are. Right. Um, and other other areas that uh, also has Upper Cumberland weather, I know, is one that does a fantastic job with covering local communities. Uh, any other local ones that you can uh, sort of tell us about that people may be in the viewing area? Well, we have uh, Rutherford severe weather. We have Nash severe weather, and all of these follow the scheme of of Nash severe WX, Ruth severe WX. I'm Cannon severe WX. Uh, we have Bedford, Severe WX, uh, Marshall, especially these counties to our west and southwest, because if you follow them, you can see what's coming in this direction. Right. And this is especially helpful for folks who do not have TV service. You know, with the economy being the way it is, some people are dropping their TV services, right. and this is one of the main ways they're getting their information. Get everything on Roku, you know, yes. you can stream it, whatever, you know. Right. We were riding horses on private property in Beach Grove. This was August of 2007, and um, we were. It was a beautiful day, and then a storm came up out of nowhere, and so we took shelter in a barn that did not have electricity. I believe it was an indirect strike. Um, there was an animal, a cow, out there that took the direct strike, and I believe it went through the ground and it came up through my legs. Well, soon after, I had some short-term memory loss and simple things like I couldn't count change. I wasn't able to count change. I had some depression. You would think I would be happy to be alive, but I actually had some immediate depression and mortal fear of staying alone. Just, I don't know, it was almost kind of like if I heard a whir sound in the house, I was just convinced, you know, I just felt like it was going to come back and get me. Um, Long-term effects, some of my memory from high school and my teenage years completely wiped out. There are people I went to high school with that I don't remember now, but I have photographs of me with them that I don't remember them, I don't remember their names. So, yeah. Absolutely. I never thought that that was something that could happen to me, and then it did. Yes, absolutely. I've always heard if you hear thunder, head indoors, because if you hear it, you can be hit. I believe if you hear thunder, you should head indoors, preferably into a house that has electricity and plumbing, because I was hit in a barn that did not have any, and then you can become the conductor in those kind of shelters. So years ago, when I would go riding by myself, you know, I have been caught in thunderstorms with lightning, and I never really had any fear of it because I had never been hit. It's just not something that I thought would happen to me or anybody I know. I didn't know anyone that had ever been hit by it. So I had no fear of state out in it, and that's what happened that day that I did get hit. I would say take it very serious. It can happen. It happened to me. 
and it almost ended my life. I was very lucky that day. Brian, when it comes to being ready for weather and being weather ready, uh, you can find all kinds of great resources like we've done mentioned, but really on a local level, it is so important that people know what to look for, know when to be prepared. Uh, on a local level, what what is something that you would add to on how people can find resources or do themselves to be weather ready? Okay, I would say start by having a disaster kit. Make sure you have food for just a few days, non-perishable foods a flashlight with batteries, uh, have a battery or hand cranked radio in case you lose power for an extended time. The hand cranked radios are really great. Sometimes you can get them even solar powered. So uh, that's one thing. Another thing is having multiple ways to receive weather alerts. And NOAA Weather Radio is an excellent way to get the alerts. Uh, smartphone apps, which are offered by some of our local TV stations. Um, the, the TV weather in itself is a way to, to uh, keep track of what's going on with the weather. And also internet weather sources, even uh, uh, sources such as Cannon Severe Weather and, and other sources in other counties. Um, also, the National Weather Service is also on social media. They're on Twitter, now known as X. They're on Facebook as well. Another thing to know is your geography. Know your county and your surrounding counties on a map. Know, note the counties to your west and to your southwest because often if there are tornadoes, they do okay. a lot of times come from the west yeah. and southwest. Not always, but often they do. So it's important to know, especially if you're new to the area. If you just moved here from somewhere else, you probably are getting just now getting to know the area you live in. So uh, take a look at maps um, and get familiar with that. Know your risks. Are you in a flood prone area? Do you live in a floodplain? Do you live near a, a river or a creek? If you do, check into that. Check with your yeah. insurance company. Make sure you're covered for People flood insurance. Yes, flood insurance is a completely different thing than homeowners insurance. And if you're if if you suspect you're in a flood area, and if your insurance company says you don't need flood insurance, but you suspect it, ask them what happens if it floods anyway. Who pays for that? Mm -hmm. That's important uh, information to know. Um, you will also need to have a safe place to go to if there's a tornado warning and that's usually an interior room on the lowest part of your house. A storm shelter is best, especially if you can get underground. If you live in a mobile home, you need to evacuate that mobile home. A mobile home can be a death trap in severe weather. So you need to have a, a place to go to, uh, check, in if, check in to see if there are any shelters in your area. Maybe you would go to a, a, a family member's house or a, a friend's house and know how you would get there. How long does it take you to get there? So if a tornado warning is issued, do you even have time to get there? Keep in mind that tornadoes can move up to 70 miles an hour across land. Wow. And they don't stop for stop signs and stop lights. So they can get, they can cover ground a lot faster than you can in a car. Yeah. So those are things to consider. Brian, I know you was watching the weather on that infamous night here in Woodbury, Cannon County, Radieville, uh, the night that the tornado hit. Uh, we're coming up marking the anniversary, one year anniversary of that that unbelievable night. And uh, But so fortunate mm -hmm. and with all the destruction, hundreds of years of history completely just blew away. Right. Um, you know, what can we say? I, I know that you have unbelievable footage uh, marking, and, and I know I, I got some B-roll footage, and there was people here that was helping from all over the world, but what did you learn from that experience? Uh, as much as I know you love the community, and uh, how thankful you was no one was injured severely, uh, what did you learn through that experience? Well, I would say just because you've never seen severe weather at your location, just because you've never seen a flood at your, at your location does not mean it cannot happen. And it seems like there's always a first with uh, severe weather. I, I think about the flooding in Waverly back in yeah. August of, of uh, 2021. Yeah. No one was expecting sure. that. Uh, people went to sleep, they're expecting to go to sleep, and next thing they know, they're being washed away. 
And so uh, I even spoke with our National Weather Service after that happened. I said, is that even possible here in Cannon County? Because I'm thinking about our our uh, watersheds. I'm thinking about our creeks and our rivers. And, and almost all of them flow out of the camp county. So I'm thinking, well, we have really good drainage here. Could that even happen? So I made a point to contact the Weather Service. And I said, I have a question for your hydrologist up there. Can that happen here in Cannon County? And I was told, yes, it can happen. Wow. It can happen. Uh, if we get 15 inches of rain in a short amount of time, like they did, they said that a large portion of Woodbury could be washed away. Wow. So it is something that can happen. It happens very rarely. So uh, just just be alert, pay attention before you go to bed at night, know what's happening, especially anytime it's warm when it shouldn't be warm in the wintertime. Keep in mind, tornadoes and severe weather can happen any time yeah. of the year. Tennessee's crazy yes, for that. Yes, any time of the year. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we feel like we're in tornado season from November all yeah. the way to July. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember uh, a date impressed in my mind, April 16th. Um, and it's it's coming to flurry, snow flurry, and I, I like that 16th of April here in Tennessee, Middle Tennessee. So you just never can tell. Um, from those experiences you've seen, just from following weather, um, what is some of the most rarest that you've you know you want to mention that you've sort of caught on film or? Mm -hmm. I, and that's the cool part too. I got to give kudos for you uh, catching the comets and stuff like that, asteroids and stuff that falls. That's pretty. Cool. Yes, I I, uh, I owe a lot of thank you to some of our local people like the Cannon County EMA and also the Short Mountain Bible Camp. They have let me put cameras in locations that give us this incredible footage. But some of the most unique things would be some of what I call these ground scraping shelf clouds. Yeah. They come into our county, they're up in the air and they start hitting the higher yeah. terrain and the uh, moisture down in the, the, the hollows. Here locally we call them hollers. Mm -hmm. The hollows, that moisture gets scooped up. We have orographic lift here. It gets scooped up into the shelf cloud, and it looks like it's just scraping the ground. Yeah. And uh, other unique things would be just uh, since we have our Canon Meslinet here now, our weather stations, we're able to see what's going on here locally. And a lot of times it's obviously colder up on Short Mountain, which is back in that direction over there. And then sometimes it's not. Sometimes we have a temperature inversion and it's warmer up there and colder in Woodbury. Wow. It depends on what the winds are doing. If, if we have yeah. a calm weather, a calm wind situation, a lot of times it's colder down here. But if it's a stormy, a winter storm type situation, it's colder in the higher elevations. And we've seen ice up at my place where I live. I live up, up in the Iconium area. It's at an elevation of 1,212 feet. And then Woodbury is down here around 600 feet. Yeah. We've had ice up there, nothing down here in Woodbury. Yeah. yeah. And so, no, nobody thinks about this, but I've, I've noted, I've noticed it. Uh, you have some of the best graphics that you build. Uh, for instance, the elevation of like Short Mountain uh, or the Cumberland Plateau comparative to the Batman Tower. and so much education you've tried to educate people with really cool you know you bring it home whenever you do stuff like that i know for a fact mcminville the city i didn't really realize it until your, your education with weather and geographically that uh the the very top of the cumberland plateau we're sort of down in a valley when it comes to mcminville so for instance we didn't get snow but y'all got snow up here on the top of the cumberland plateau or the peak of it so uh, you know i learned that just from following the stuff that you're putting out online yeah i love maps i love anything visual i love looking at charts and, and that kind of thing that's i guess that's why i'm i guess you would say kind of good at that i mean I'm, i don't think i'm that great but but i enjoy doing that kind of thing and i like sharing that with people to to kind of educate on on that and why weather situations happen here locally that's cool well man i appreciate all your service to the community um how can people support you what's the best way to do that well simply follow share the posts um if you want to go a step further and and, and support financially I, I really don't take money and i don't do anything subscription with patreon like like some of the other services do but if you want to buy us some equipment or something mm -hmm. contact me 
and I'll tell you what all we need. If there's something in your price range that you want to purchase, we could use more cameras, for example. Yeah. We went to SWAD, Severe Weather Awareness Day, up at Trevecca University last Saturday, and James Spann from uh, ABC in Birmingham, he was saying, we need more cameras on these tornadoes. He said, people will see a radar screen, and to them, that's just colors, but if they see a picture of the cloud, if they see the rotation, when they see those images, they will take action, they will take cover, they believe it then. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brian, I thank you for everything you do. We want to thank you for watching. Be storm ready. Don't get caught not watching the weather. I know that it can be, you know, you know they, they'll tell about a storm coming a week from now, and, and then maybe it doesn't happen, but that one night that you're not watching uh, can be so important that you keep your eyes and ears to the sky and make sure you're storm ready. Thank you for watching. Thanks for all of our sponsors for making this happen. We want to thank Andrew and all that he does for Cannon Severe Weather. We also want to thank all the other Storm Network TV stations, radio stations that continues to be the warnings, eyes and ears for our community. And as we say always until next time, we hope to see you inside your community.